Hi everyone, welcome to my studio. You're with Lucy and today I'm going to show you how to Coptic bind some beautiful, beautiful paper. Now this paper is very, very special. It was saved in the floods in Mwilumba in 2022 from a shop that was totally devastated and flooded called Yellow Brick Studio. The owner Lisa has brought the paper back and she's now has it for us artists to use. So I'm taking this and I'm binding a book out of this paper. So I hope you enjoy the video. Please make sure that you click that like button and subscribe and please comment if you like the video. So the paper that I'm making this book out of is drawing paper mixed with some watercolour paper. There's a few different kinds of paper and that's the wonderful thing about these sets. And so many of them have lovely watermarks on them. So I'm going to really enjoy using the marks in the paper at, for creativity. So first thing I'm going to do is tear my paper and I use a big ruler so that I can tear along it and I'm just very roughly measuring my pages and the big thing I'm doing is making a book that actually is the size that I'm not throwing much paper away at all so I'm just cutting just tearing these edges off and I'm in I'm going to make a landscape book and I just want to make sure I don't throw away too much of this beautiful paper. So I'm not giving you measurements. You can use A4 paper or whatever you like. This is just a special um, size that I'm making for the, this project. I'm taking this journal away with me um, for my urban sketching when I'm overseas. I'm leaving very soon so make sure you do follow me to see what I'm doing over there. I'll be doing some art and some jelly printing and all sorts of fun things so make sure you subscribe. So what do we need to make our book? We need a few things. Um, I have got this lovely paper that I'm going to cover my book with and I got this in Bruges in Belgium just before COVID struck so I really wanted to use it as a cover for my book. I've also got some box board covers so this is quite thick box board. If you don't have this kind of cardboard you can laminate cereal packets together or any other cardboard. It doesn't work to use it with corrugated cardboard so it will need to be like a solid card and this is quite a heavy one and I have pre-cut it to the size of my book. Now here are my beautiful pages that you saw me ripping up and I'm really, really happy with how they are. So I've put these, I've just had them in my press, that's why they're turned different ways. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine signatures and each one is made up of two sets of pages, so two pages. You could, I could do... Um, three in there but I actually really like to have the groups of two and I like the look of it at the back so it's up to you so long as you have equal amounts in each one it doesn't really matter how many you have so you can really have you know where you could have five groups of three pages these are called signatures and signatures are what make up a book and any book even in conventional um, book binding is made up of signatures so have a look at some of your books even some of the glued together ones are made up of signatures. So that, that's what we need. We've got our paper. I've got that torn. You saw how I tore it. I have a bone scorer, which I use to um, do the edges. Now you can just use the back of a pair of scissors. Don't use anything like a knife because you can actually damage your paper. Then I have waxed thread. Now this is a book binding wax thread and I'm going to use black because I think it looks really good with the red here. 
I do have a natural color and a dark brown as well. Then I've got what's called an awl. And this is a sharp tool that you need to be a little bit careful with. It's for pricking the holes in the paper. And we are also going to make the holes in the cardboard. And we need to be quite careful. I keep mine pushed in an eraser so that, or a cork so that I don't pick it up out of my tools and hurt myself. The other thing that I use is a curved sewing needle. So you can see here, it's just a curved needle. I used to do, um, do my binding with a straight needle, but I found it is much, much better with a curved needle. And my previous Coptic binding video was done with the straight needle. And you'll see how much easier this is. So let's get started. Now the first thing I'm going to do is cover my back and front covers. It's important to have them ready for when we're ready to sew. So you can use a white glue to do this. It doesn't have to be the, I'm using clear craft glue. And one of the reasons I'm using the clear craft glue is for the video, I need it to dry pretty quickly. And I find that the white glue doesn't quite dry quick enough to do this. Now I think my paper's pretty much the same on both sides. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some glue out on my card. And I tend to do this on the card because I want it to go right to the sides. And this is that stringy craft glue. If you have spray adhesive, that's also a good option. And then I'm just making sure that the glue is right to the sides. It does dry quickly, so you don't have a lot of time to muck around. So I'm going to put this straight in the middle like that. Now that will give me a nice, I'll just give it a nice push. Make sure there's no creases. And then I'm turning my page over. So then you'll need a pair of scissors. And what we're going to do is cut at a 45 degree angle, leaving quite a bit of space here. So you don't want to cut right into the corner. It needs to be about two and a half times to three times the thickness of the cardboard you need to leave in that corner. And I'm going to just go through and do them all. <laughs> One of the things I did book binding at college when I was younger, and I'm very pedantic about the corners on my books. Now, this is where I also consider how I want my book. Now, my book will be landscape, and therefore I always like to put the top and the bottom covers up first. No particular reason. I just don't like going alt, alt, alternate around it. So, can't speak today. So, then I'm going to take this over and I'm just going to use something to make a nice corner there. Take that one over and just make sure I've got a nice corner. Now, that's given me a lovely edge there. Now what we need to consider is we want these corners to look really neat when they're folded over. So I take my glue into the corner. Don't put too much into the corner because it'll squeeze out everywhere. So just the thinnest amount. Then I'm going to take my fingernail and I'll just zoom in for that. Okay, so I'm going to take my fingernail and I'm going to push the paper in this way and you can see it gets like a little it makes like a little ear so when I turn my page over now I get a perfectly covered corner see how nice that corner is so it's really important that you do that little edge have that extra not too much glue. It's very easy to end up with glue everywhere. So push in the corners, flatten them out so they kind of sit flat. And then 
we have our lovely book. All we need to do is line it. Now, I'm going to do the other one, but I'll do that off camera because you've seen this one. <clears throat> so I've got my covers all made and I've got this paper here that I'm going to put on the inside of the covers. So I'm just going to put the glue on it. Just check. This is a lovely paper because it's got a waxy feel to it. So I think it's going to stand up to a bit of travel journaling. So there's my covers and I um, can now put them in the book press to give them a little bit of a press. Now, just one thought though, just a tip. I use baking paper whenever I've used glue and I just put the baking paper between the two boards just where I know there's going to be glue. So there could be glue around these edges and I don't want it to get stuck in the press so I'm just putting baking paper around it and if you don't have a press just some heavy weights are fine. So the next thing we need to do is make the holes in our signatures. Now I always like to work with my signatures the same way so I just encourage you to put a little star on your signatures on one corner just so that when we start sewing, if we happen, because these are kind of odd shaped ones because they're torn, if we, we might end up with a very wonky book if we don't have some sort of order. So this is the way I want it to be. That cross will always be in the corner. Now I'm going to then cut a piece of paper approximately the size of the book. So I'm actually looking and seeing if there's any ones that are much smaller than others. And if there's not, I'm just making a template. So this is going to be my template for my holes. And it's always good to have a template. So that's the width of the book. And the easiest way to make sure you're okay is to fold it in half. I like to put about two centimeters between my signatures. So all you need to do now is measure. And just I'll just come a little closer so you can see. So I'm going to take my ruler. Doesn't need to be a set square. And I'm going to measure from this one two centimeters. I think that's three quarters of an inch if you're not in metric. It doesn't really matter so long as it's consistent and sometimes I've made books with different ones where I've had like a big gap and just the ones on the side so you don't have to have this many and if you look up Coptic binding you'll see there's lots of different ways people do it. Then what I'm going to do is open up my first two signatures and I'm putting my template in there in the center and along the crease line I am marking my holes and that way when I go now to my all, just put these to the side. Now I do this where I hold the paper on the table flat. So this paper is on the table flat and I go into it at a slight angle. I'll just see which, how I'm doing that, a slight angle. And I'm just pushing a tiny hole. Do not push it all the way up the awl because you can see the awl is tapered and we don't want a giant hole. Not for this book. There may be times where you do want to have a larger one, but you don't need to. So then I'm just going to take that and put it with my star this way. So... I find it much easier to do it from the inside rather than the outside. And you can see here, this, this six set of signatures looks a little bit narrower, just fractionally. So I just center. If you're doing one with torn paper rather than properly machine cut paper, 
you um, definitely will end up with a book that's a little bit more um, interesting, I guess. There's something nice about this flood paper having um, a new life as a book. So I just keep stacking them. Everything in bookbinding is repetitive. So there's things that you do once and then you'll do it again. And you can see here I have this page is slightly smaller than that page. So I'm just going to make sure they're centered. And when I put this template on, I'm going to center it. That way we shouldn't end up with too wonky a page. Now, sometimes I mark all the dots first. There is also a tool you can make, which I will show you in another video that my husband helped me make. Okay. So I'm going to continue to do all my holes in my signatures and then we'll do the next step. Now, there, when you're sewing your Coptic bound book, it's really important to have a good amount of thread, but not too much thread. Now, I just wanted to let you know that at any point in time, we can add more thread. And I will be showing you that in this video, because some people make really long threads and they make it incredibly difficult for them to sew. So I just spread my arms out kind of nearly wide and that's the length I will do it. And I just thread my needle. And the first part, putting the cover on, is probably the trickiest part of the actual binding. And after that, it's just very, very repetitive. So I'm just going to make my knot. So you need quite a large knot in your thread. The reason that wax thread is so nice is because it also kind of binds to itself so that it kind of, the knot's really strong because the wax kind of gets together in there and makes it really tough. So I'm going to take my first, my board, put all the rest of these over here, making sure to keep them all the same way. So I'm going to open up my first signature and I'm going to put my needle through that first hole. And you can see that's why we need quite a big knot. Don't pull that too tight. You do not want to tear it. So just, you know, a nice firm um, hold on it. Then I'm going to take my thread over the top. So I've got my signature there. I'm taking my thread over the top and in to the hole, the first hole. Okay. So see how we've got it through the first hole like that. Now, just takes a second to focus. <laughs> okay, so then I've got my thread there. What I want to do, I'm going to take it to the other side. I'm going to do two stitches here. So what I'm doing is just capturing that stitch prior. Now why I do two is so that I can get a little bit of firmness because we don't want our cover to be loose. So I've got that like that. Then I head back inside through that same hole. Now the first one is going to be tricky because you've got that knot there, right? So we just got to go, don't go through your knot, just hold the knot out of the way a little bit. And you're going to pull your thread through. Okay, and now you can tighten because it's wrapped around the big piece of cardboard. So if you pull tight now, you're not going to tear your paper because it's around the cardboard. Now I'm going to go back down through the second hole, up through the top hole. Okay. And what I want to do is go through the outside. So I'm looping over. It's really good for you to see it that way. So you can see here, I'm taking a loop over the top, through the board, 
but I'm coming up between the two. Okay. I'm going to give it a nice tighten because it is around the cardboard now. I'm going to put my needle through that hole and come up. Can you see how I've just put it through there? Give it a pull. I'm going to put it through there again. All this is doing is creating like a little knot. So I'm putting it through there. And pulling it tight. And then I want to return back through the same hole that I came through in. So I'm coming back through that hole there. So I'm not coming, I'm not coming up through another hole. Now again, this is where you can give it a pull because it's around the board and you can't tear it. If you pull it in the wrong place, you will tear. So if I now put this hole, put it through the next hole. Okay. So if I put it through this hole and I started to pull now, I would pull a hole through my thread and it would stop there. So I would tear that whole edge there. So don't tighten unless it's wrapped around something. So I'm just going to go back in through my board. This is where the curved needles are great. So I can just pull that up. So I've gone over the top of my board again. Each stitch is absolutely the same. So it's not like you need to learn different stitches. I'm tightening it again because I can now. It's around the board. I'm doing that capture stitch. That capture stitch also helps us with that kind of knitted look that you get from a Coptic bound journal. So I'm going back through into the middle again. Give it a nice pull. Now, if you on your first book have trouble with getting it tight enough, don't worry. At the end, I will show you how to tighten a made book. So, again, I will show you all the stitches on this one because I think, you know, if you feel like you've got it, please fast forward ahead. But if you, sometimes I find my students need just a little bit of extra help on this first bit. Okay, back down. Now some people like to use white thread so they don't have the black inside here. I truly love the handmade book look, so I kind of embrace it. Right, so back out again. Oops. Oh, sometimes you feel like you need to be be an octopus. Okay, so back out, back out. Always get stuck on everything. Back out, tighten it up a bit, but not too much. Through that, there. Through there. Two capture stitches. And then back down here. Tighten side. So it's just going inside, outside, inside, outside. So okay, now I'm going to take the needle through the next hole. Always remember, you, you know, a, a thing to remember is it's always on when you're coming, you're always going to the outside of your cover. Two capture stitches. 
back inside we're nearly done to here and then we'll get into the next one I'll just speed it up quickly here Okay, so I'm pretty happy that I've got all those all together. And you can see that's your first lot of signatures. I've got this last one here to go over the top. So I'm going to go over it and do my capture stitch. And we're ready to add another signature okay so you can see here we've got our signature now when when the first one's on it it does move around a little but we'll get started so now I need to have a look at where my star is so my star is here so that means I want my next one to go that way look how beautiful this water stained paper is it's just beautiful so for this, I'm just going to capture one more time there and then I'm going to go from this, I've got my, my previous signature facing upwards, my back is, for, is to the downwards and I'm going to go in the first signature. Okay. And then... I'm going to go out the next hole. Now again, don't pull tight here. Here is where I could easily rip it if I pull tight. So you can see here I've come out here and our tendency is to go, oh, I'm going to tighten that there and then that would tear all the way there. So most people when they first start binding will do it once or twice. Now, when I come to this bit, this is the important bit. So I've come out that hole and then I'm going to take my needle and go between these here. So between the board and the previous um, signature and I'm just going to do those two stitches. And in fact you can take it down to one stitch now. I will actually just do one. Then I'm going to take my needle back through the hole now we can tighten now back out the hole it's so super easy it's a really easy way of bound binding so i've come back out that hole and i'm going to do capture stitch and if you just do um well you could do two i think i'm going to do two just to make it a bit thicker back in through the hole again this is the time to tighten and your wax thread will tighten really nicely back out through between so this particular one you're always going between the board and the signature previous no use going between the two signatures. That won't actually do anything. We're going to the one before, and that's how we get that nice kind of knitted look. Go back out. I do spend the time, like, doing all this tightening because I find my books are much nicer. Through. 
Now, when that gets annoying, just make sure you get that out of the way, that extra bit of thread. We don't want double threads. So we'll double stitch that. Back out. Never pull on the outward one. Back through. One, two, back in. Because our holes are all pre done, it's really very easy to sew this book up. And then I'll show you the next one. And then you can pretty much keep going with all of them exactly the same. And we'll come back and get together to do the back cover, which is just a little bit tricky. You can wear a thimble. My previous video I used a flat needle and I found that flat needles are not nearly as good as curved needles for this process. So I'm on my last hole in my signature and now what I want to do is add my next page. So again making sure that I have the stars there so that way I'm just going to do exactly what I did then go down this hole let's make sure it's lined up there we go down this one back out the next one so it's just repetitive and I find it's quite meditative so I don't want to pull too tight here remember because I can tear those but I just want to show you this so every time you add a new signature when you do this bit here capturing you're always capturing on the one before so you have to like we were using capturing in here before this time we're capturing in there. And again. And then back in. Back out. And then again, just to remind you our threads there between these last two so make sure you really get around them because you'll get that it's a stitch that looks like knitting okay give it a pull remember to pull here because this will help tighten all your binding behind and two back through. Okay, now I'm just going to keep going. So all we're doing is zigzagging back and forwards, but when I get to the point where I run out of cotton, I'm going to stop and I'm going to show you how to add your, some more thread. Now I clearly don't have enough thread left, so I'm just going to show you how to add your next bit of thread. So I'm going to cut myself another piece of thread about the same length. 
and I'm going to make a knot. I want the knot to end up closer to So I want the knot to go closer to that hole. So I've just pulled it tight there. Then I'm going to just poke this thread, one of the loose threads, through that other hole. And then I'm going to tie it again. I really don't want my books to fall apart. So I tend to be a little bit overzealous with this. Now I'm just going to cut my thread. You can push your threads to the back and hide them if you want. but I think there's something nice about having the threads in a handmade book. So I then just continue as before, going backwards and forwards through my book, adding my pages. So you can see here where the knot is won't hurt anything. I, I'm going to go through this next hole. Sometimes it's a little hard to hold the round needles. <laughs> Just going to go through. And keep going. Again, I just want to point out how important it is that you move now to the next one. So I'm not going between these two now. I'm going between the two just prior. Give it a tighten. And then back into the center. And we just keep going backwards and forwards until we have all our pages in our book. And I'll be right back when I have the cover done. Okay, so I'm working my way through, and you can see I've got these beautiful stitches. So we're going to do a little bit more stitching on the end bits. But you can see I've got my lovely stitching there. Now I'm up to my last signature. And I'll just do that with you. So again, just going, nothing changes for this one. It's just going to change when we put the cover on. So just get this last one on. So you can see how important it is to stitch the same way and you can see I just wanted to kind of show you what I do I tend to lay my book although it's hard for you to see this I tend to lay my book down while I'm stitching because I find it just easier to keep it tight and even though when I hold it up to show you the stitch but when I'm actually working on here I'm just holding my book flat and putting my stitches in. You get faster and faster at this. I did actually add a little bit more string or um, waxed thread. Oops. But you can see the good thing about holding it this way too is that um, I can really see where I'm working. And I'm also adding a little bit of pressure with my hand to the book and keeping it nice and square. So there's reasons to hold it in this position. Okay, once I've got this one on, we will get to the cover end. Very quickly, we have from tearing paper to putting cardboard together we have ourselves a lovely book there's something really special about having your own journals it's a bit arty
And I do make journals out of all different paper. I sometimes even put sometimes a little bit of music paper in here and there. Different kinds of paper, some coloured paper, consider putting in your art journal, some pastel paper. You can I don't know what that was. Okay, so now I have come to the end, I make sure that I do those capture stitches there. I want that to be nice and tight. And then I take my cover. Now, of course, we're going to be stitching around again. So basically what I tend to do is put my needle through the hole on the outside of the cover and then that pulls up like that and you can see it's on the outside and then I go through the one before again okay so that's the important thing you go through as if you were putting another um, page on you're going to go through that second one again and that just ends up with a much nicer finish okay then I go back inside that one so I'm just going to turn it so it's a little bit easier to see so I'm just going to open that next I'm going to go back through that first signature now you will end up with two rows of thread here but that doesn't matter you won't even see it some people do put the cover on in one go as they're doing that particular um, maybe we just need to tighten that up a bit just go in there so this is where I really want to make sure that my work is nice and tight. Okay, so I'm, I've come through out of the second signature, which as you can see here, I need to go over the top. And the easiest thing is just to flip your cover slightly, poke your needle through and just pull it to there so just pull it around in that space and then do your double stitch so you can see there where i'm doing it i'm going back through the center of that particular signature that last signature coming back out Going through to the next one. Oops. Need to push a bit more of needle through. Okay. Your hands do get a little tired. Sometimes people like to have a bit of a rest while they're doing this. The big thing is to always make sure you're tightening at this stage. You don't want this outside cover to be loose. Now I'm just tilting that a bit. So I can pull the needle through then I'll take the cord around here because it's easier than trying to knot it. I'll give it a good hard tug. I'll do those stitches while it's sitting nice and square. So it is easier to lay it when you're doing that. I know it's kind of hard to show, but you can see I'm just going to go back through that signature now. back outside that one pull it tight tip my my cover a little so I can just poke through
through pull my needle through then I'm just going around here I go around that way just so I'm not getting tangled up on the ones that I've already done so doing that capture stitch the capture stitch that I well I call it a capture stitch there might be another name for it is what actually holds your book together so it's really important that you do them if you want a nice tight even looking book back outside I'm going to come very close on my string here So you can see I've come out there, so I've just brought that around there. Tighten. Find if you make a few books in a sitting, you will end up with quite sore hands. At the same time as being quite satisfied with what you've done. I get cramps in my hands and Sometimes that's time for a little break. Okay, now I do not have enough string, even though I'd love to say that I do. So I'm just going to add that little bit more and I'll just quickly show you again. I don't know if you've added a few bits throughout your binding, but I'll tie a little knot close to the hole that I've just come out of. And I'm just going to put one of the threads Push that thread through under there. So push that through there. Tie it off. And I'll just finish the book. So it really doesn't matter where you tie. Back here. You can see just holding this cover up and then flicking the needle around there through the hole just makes it easier and just working this way. Now I'm always just going in that next section. Nothing has changed. You can see here see how neat it's turning out I find if you do it hold it up like this some people like to hold their books up when they sew them but I find when I do this I don't get it quite as tight as I'd like to get it. So to my capture stitch and it's actually quite hard even to get my needle between my um, signatures because my stitching is nice and tight and that's a terrific sign. If you've got, if you're having trouble getting your needle through between your signatures that's usually a sign that you've got nice tight sewing. 
Okay, so I'm coming to the end and I'll show you how to finish it off. So I come to the end, I'm going to go through my cover, through here, do my capture stitches. Okay, so what you can then do, if your book for, for some reason was not very tight, like this is super tight, but if it wasn't tight, you can go through and do every, go between each stitch on each end and just do a tightening loop. So just go through and then go and you go through between each one to make it tidy and give it a really good pull if you're doing that like I don't have to with this one because it is quite tight but so what you want to do is go through there and then what you want to do is go through the loop and come to the end and you could do that on both ends if you like. But I think mine is super tight. All right. So I'm just going to go back on the inside of whichever, it doesn't matter which signature I go back onto the inside of. So I'm just going to go onto the inside. Maybe the one I just started on. Actually, I might go through the one next to it. I'm just coming through us through here and what I'm going to do then is just go through that loop make a loop and tighten it and I do that a few times so to make that um, I even do a couple That would have been all right. I just saw that I had a loose bit, so I'm just tightening it. And then you can just cut your thread and you have your Copic bound journal. Now this is terrific because it's beautiful paper from the flood. So every um, four pages, you will have this open page some people don't like that so they put masking tape or tape there i think it's lovely this is beautiful look it looks like it you could just get some walnut ink and do something really special with that i think so you can see i have my book and it lays flat so it's a great book for working in because it lays flat while you're working and you can use some of your favorite paper this is so exciting that this was made out of the special paper from the floods. I think I like the bubbles and things like that on there too. So um, make sure that you comment and like my video. I hope you enjoyed making this and please tell me if you make one too. Thanks very much. You're with Lucy.